Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. And if you're new here, well that's exactly what I do do. Now today we're looking at a new camera released by Canon and it's for Canon R10. Um, a little while ago, well very recently actually, they released two new cameras, the R7 and the R10. And these two new cameras are APS-C cameras that are in their lineup. Um, up until now, as far as RF mount cameras, they've only had the full frame bodies, like the RP, the SR, the R5, the R3, etc. Um, these two new cameras are APS-C cameras, so they're smaller sensors, uh, but they're still great cameras. And they're competing really with the Nikon Z50, the Z30 I would suggest, and the, ZV, the Sony ZV-E10. Now I've got today the Canon R10. I can't show it to you simply because I'm filming on it. So I've got the close-up shot here being filmed on the Canon R10 with the RF 50mm lens. Now I purchased this camera from Clifton Cameras in the UK. Uh, I purchased it with the kit lens, the 18 to 45 kit lens that we have here. Um, and this is a really actually good lens. It's a, a plastic fantastic lens, plastic mount, isn't weather sealed, um, but the optics are really good. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice lens. It trombones as you, um, you know, use it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a nice lens. The optics are good. The um, aperture range is limited. Uh, it isn't a fast lens, but it is a kit lens that's bundled with the R10. Uh, I suspect it's also bundled with the R7, I'm not sure. Um, also, I was really pleased when it arrived because it came with the EFS e and EF adapter to RF. So um, I've actually got the adapter here uh, and it has no optics in the adapter. It is literally a, um, a, a piece of metal, very, very well made uh, piece of metal, no optics in it, but adapts your EFS and the F uh, lenses to the new RF mirrorless RF mount. I've got fitted to my Canon R10 the RF uh, 50mm lens and it's a 50mm f1.8 nifty 50 and it's a really cheap lens in the RF uh, system so that's why I got it and it should give me some nice creamy bokeh in the background. Now, I really do like the Canon R10. I've never been a big fan of Canon cameras. I like the ergonomics and I like the way the cameras work, but I don't know what it is about Canon. I've never been a big fan of them. Uh, but I, I always enjoy the quality of Canon cameras. Um, actually, years ago when I started, uh, uh, you know, uh, me hobby really in photography, I did love Canon. And I, uh, the, my favorite camera of all time is the Canon A1. And I've got it on the shelf up here somewhere. It's an old film camera. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. Uh, but uh, yeah, so back to the R10. Now, the R10 has some great features. Uh, obviously, it's lacking some because it's an entry level camera. But being entry level doesn't mean to say you're going to get poor results. It doesn't mean that whatsoever. Now, I'm going to go through some of the photographs on my computer here um, at some point during this video so you can actually see um, what the images are like. And they're lovely images. You know, the sensor in the R10, I might as well go through them now. The sensor in the R10 is great. It's a 24 megapixel sensor. But it isn't a backside illuminated sensor. So in low light, you're going to suffer a little bit. So I wouldn't use really high ISOs. I would keep the ISO range down as best you can. Um, but other than that, you're going to get some great images from this 24 megapixel sensor. Dynamic range is great. I did some shots, you know, indoors. Um, I've cropped out uh, to be um, panora panoramic. But the sharpness is great once the computer loads image images. Um, and what's really, really nice with these modern uh, uh, mirrorless cameras is the fact that you can adapt your older lenses. And that's the same with the Nikon Z30 I've got over here. You can use the FTZ adapter to adapt your older uh, DX mount lenses, which are the APS-C lenses, uh, the same as on the Canon R10. Because there isn't a large range of APS-C dedicated RF lenses for the R10 at the moment. Uh, there's plenty of full frame lenses for the R10, which obviously will work on the R10, but not many 
uh, APS-C lenses. So just adapt your old EFS lenses. I've got adapted here my uh, old um, Canon 10-18. to It's an EFS lens. It's a 10-18. to um, And that adapts beautifully. This adapter retains your autofocus. It retains your apertures, the EXIF information, and also the image stabilization that's in the lens. So, you know, um, you're good to go. And also, they're not expensive. Most of the uh, um, uh, APS-C lenses are not expensive. So, um, you know, you're good to go. And that's what I would highly recommend. And I think that's what Canon are targeting. Our users that have got the older uh, APS-C bodies and have got a range of lenses. And because they're bundling the, uh, the adapter with it, then... You know, you're on a winner. It's a shame Nikon don't do that with their Z30. I'm looking down with Z30 now. I've got fitted to it my Sigma 18 to 35 F mount lens to the Z30. Uh, that's adapted. That is working great. So um, I would say that's what you know most people are going to do initially with their R7 and the R10 is use adapted lenses. Now, also, the R10 has no in-body image stabilization. The R7 does, but not the R10. So it's kind of important if you want to use slower shutter speeds to use uh, a, to use lenses would have got uh, um, image stabilization in. And that's denoted on Canon lenses with the word IS, so image stabilization in the lens. My 10 to 18 has, um, and quite a few of the RF mount lenses have as well. The RF 50mm lens doesn't, but when I'm using it on a tripod, so it's neither here nor there. Um, so that's great. It's got a three inch articulating screen, so that's perfect. You can turn it out so you can actually see yourself when you're doing this kind of thing. It's got the dual pixel AF uh, version 2. Uh, apparently, that's the same dual pixel AF that's in the uh, Canon R5, the R3. Um, I don't know about the uh, other Canon ESR cameras, but apparently it's the same dual pixel autofocus fits in the much higher end of cameras. Uh, but it's not going to be so fast with sports and wildlife because it's an entry level camera. But the, the results it produces, I think, are, are great, as you can see here. That's why I can't show you the camera because I'm actually filming this sequence with the camera, so that's why I can't show it to you. I will do a separate video where, where I will go uh, in a little bit more detail what features the camera has, and I will be doing comparisons between this camera, uh, the Nikon Z50, which I think is its most direct competitor, purely because the Z50 has a viewfinder. I don't think the Z30 um, and the ZV-E10 over here um, are real direct com uh, competitors, because they don't have viewfinders. Uh, where the uh, the Canon R10 does have a viewfinder. It's got a mic jack. I've got my Hollyland wireless microphone going straight into the R10 now. So it has got a, head, uh, a, a microphone jack, but no headphone jack, which is a disappointing. Um, not a deal breaker for me, but it is disappointing if you want to use it purely for video. I would probably suggest you go for something like the R7 if you want to stay within the Canon uh, ecosystem, go for the R7 because that has got in body image stabilization and it has got the headphone jack. Um, but, uh, uh, it, but you know, it works great, it hasn't got log profiles and all that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm filming in the neutral profile now. I don't use log profiles because it's too much grading, it's too much, it's too much work involved. Um, when I'm using multi cameras like this, I want to be able to get it onto the computer, edit it without. I do a little bit of grading, but not doing too much. I don't want to be doing too much grading, so that again doesn't worry me. You'd have to go for the more expensive uh, cameras in the Canon range if you do want to be able to do color grading. Um, now, as far as still images are concerned, I think it's a very capable uh, uh, camera. It really is a very capable camera. What I would suggest, rather than looking at them on my computer, although I did very quickly just go through a few there, but look at them on my Flickr page. I leave a link in the description to my Flickr page so you can take a look at them there. That way you can study them much better than you can on my YouTube video because of YouTube's compression. So take a look at them on Flickr. And as I say, I will be doing a more uh, detailed look at the Canon R10 in another video. Certainly not in this video because I can't show you the um, 
R10. It's got some idiosyncrasies as far as uh, the HDMI output, um, but I'll discuss that in another video. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, really, but, um, you know, so be it. There you go. Um, it takes the... The battery is the LPE17 battery. Um, it's pretty okay. You know, it's not so bad. Uh, it's not as good as the Nikon uh, ELEN25 battery, whatever it's in the Nikon Z30 over there. But, you know, it's okay. And it has got power delivery and uh, USB charging. But that's a pain in the butt because you have to have the right sort of charger for it to work, the right sort of USB lead. Um, I've got one plugged in now. I'm still not 100% sure that it's actually going to charge the camera. Or I mean, I may even find the battery may well die because I'm not quite sure if it is actually working. Um, I don't like that, to be honest, and not knowing. With the Nikon Z30 that we're looking at here, uh, it shows a little mains plug that shows that you're plugged in. Straight away, it works. Any charger, any lead that I plugged in, and it works. The same on my Nikon Z5. I can just plug in anything in that, um, within reason, it seems, anything in that, and it just works. So I don't have to worry about battery running out. And again, the same on my ZVE10. I've got a power block plugged into that, I didn't have to flap around with it. It looks like with a Canon, you do have to be very specific what power delivery charger you're using and what USB lead you're using. And I'm not sure I've got to grips with that just yet, but I should keep you updated on my experiences with that. The SD card goes into the battery compartment as well. That annoys me. You know, with the older cameras, and I'm going back a long time ago, like with a Nikon D40, the SD card goes in the side of a camera. It would be so much nicer if the SD card could go in the side of these cameras as opposed to in where the battery goes. It's most annoying when you're on a tripod. It's funny, isn't it? I was just saying about the battery running out on the, uh, the Canon R10. And yes, the battery has run out on the R10. It's going on there, change battery or charge battery. And I have got a power block plugged into it. Um, so obviously, clearly, that power block isn't actually running the R10. So I've really got to get to grips with um, how that all works on the R10. Because apparently it does. And I really do need that to work if I'm going to use it long term here in the studio. Because the batteries just won't last the number of shoots that I do. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos relating to video photography, audio podcasting, so on and so forth. I'm actually filming a close-up shot on my Nikon Z5 here. Now I was on the R10 until the battery went uh, went flat. Uh, but I'm doing a close-up shot now on my Nikon Z5 with a 40mm lens on. The wide shot here is with me Nikon Z30 and the Sigma 18-35 to F1.8 lens fitted to it. And I've got an over-the-shoulder shot there with me Nikon ZVE10. Um, out of interest, the R10 wouldn't have died uh, on me if a battery hadn't have failed because it has got no record limit, just the same as me uh, Z30 here and me ZVE10. Uh, so that's a bit of a pity, isn't it? There we go. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers for now. Bye.